Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 19 juni 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin will be largely in English, but just like last week, we will start with some text in Dutch. We have some Morse code words and an SSTV image received from PH3 UNX in PD90 because of the clarity and detail in the image. But for now, first some non-ham stuff in Dutch. Ik begin vandaag dus weer een keer met een niet-amateur onderwerp. Vandaag is Vaderdag, dus is het misschien wel aardig om daar even op in te gaan. Tegenwoordig wordt vaak gedacht dat Vaderdag een dag is die door de commissie is ingesteld. Maar dat is niet het geval. Sommige mensen in Nederland vieren Vaderdag en Moederdag zelfs om die reden niet. Misschien zullen zij dit dus moeten bijstellen. Naar verluid is Vaderdag in 1909 geïntroduceerd door mevrouw Sonora Smart Dot in de staat Washington... ...waarbij zij haar vader William, William Jackson Smart wilde eren, zo schrijft Wikipedia. Zij was hiervoor geïnspireerd door Anne Jarvis, die een jaar eerder een Moederdag had gelanceerd... De eerste vaderdag vond plaats in 19 juni, of op 19 juni in 1910 in Spokane in de staat Washington. President Calvin Coolidge steunde in 1924 het idee om een vaderdag te vieren, maar het geheel uit mannen bestaande Amerikaanse congres wilde niet iets doorvoeren dat zo de mannen in het zonnetje zetten. Het gevolg hiervan was dat de dag pas officieel in de VS erkend werd tijdens het presidentschap van Richard Nixon in 1972. In Nederland werd vanaf 1937 in oktober Vaderdag gevierd. Vaderdag werd in 1948 op initiatief van de toenmalige Nederlandse Bond van Herenmode detailisten verplaatst naar de derde zondag van juni. En dat is dus wel een commerciële invloed op het gebeuren. Ook Moederdag is niet ontstaan vanuit commerciële motieven. Het vereren van moeders is een veel oudere traditie dan de Moederdag en gaat terug op de moedercultus in, de klassieke, in het klassieke Griekenland. In Engeland wordt Moederdag sinds 1644 al gevierd. Mogelijk vindt deze vereering van de moeder zijn oorsprong in de traditie van de vereering van Maria, de moeder van Jezus. And now we will continue with some DX info and other news in English. Hello, I'm Bob McCready, GK0 FGX with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain for Sunday the 19th of June 2016. And now the DX News, compiled from 425 DX News and other sources. 3 Bravo 8 slash Mike Zero Romeo Charlie X-Ray is active from Mauritius, IOTA reference Alpha Foxtrot 049, in a family-type DX expedition. He'll be on air until the 14th of July, and QSL is via Echo Bravo 7 Delta X-Ray or EQSL. The Lofoten Islands, Echo Uniform 076, are on the air, courtesy of Lima Alpha slash Delta Lima 5 Romeo Mike Hotel, with a holiday-style operation out of a camper van until the 25th, QSL to home call sign or via the Bureau. Romeo Charlie 1 Mike, Romeo Victor 1 Charlie Charlie, and United Alpha 1 Quebec Victor are on the air, as Romeo Victor 1 Charlie Charlie stroke portable, and Romeo Charlie 1 Mike Papa stroke portable, from the island of Cashin, Echo Uniform 102. They're there until the 23rd, activity is on the 40 to 50 metre bands, and QSL Direct, or via the Bureau. Steve, November Yankee 3 Bravo will be active from St. Lucia Island, IOTA November Alpha 108 from the 22nd of June to the 4th of July as Juliet 6 slash November Yankee 3 Bravo. He will operate on 40, 20 and 15 metres SSB and CW and QSL is via Logbook of the World. Howard, Whiskey Bravo 4, Whiskey X-Ray Echo is going to be active again from Dominica Island, IOTA November Alpha 101 as Juliet 79 X-Ray Echo from the 22nd of June to the 11th of July. He'll operate on 40 to 6 metres with priority given to 6 metres and QSL via the home call. Wolfgang, Delta Kilo 1 Hotel Whiskey is going to be active from Safari, also known as Mushimasgali Island, and that's Mushimas Migil Reef in the Maldives, Alpha Sierra 013, and he's there from the 20th to the 28th of June. His call sign will be 8 Quebec 7 Hotel Whiskey, and activities on the HF bands in CW, SSB, and PSK 31, QSL via his home call. Friday to Sunday sees the Hamtronic show at Friedrichshafen in Germany. There'll be a large number of trade stands plus a huge flea market. Many IARU member societies have stands in the main hall. Lectures take place every day, some in English, and there will be a large RSGB bookstall. Details are online at hamradio-friedrichshafen.de. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. And now for this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. 
Want a nifty tool to use to see when you and a distant station will both be in the footprint of a satellite? Go over to ns6t.net slash azimuth where you will find a program that will calculate a map with whatever distance you choose centered on a particular location. For example, enter your lat long and then 7,810 kilometers, the range of AO7. The program will generate the appropriate map. Maybe you are trying to break one of the satellite contact distance records. This program will help you visualize how far you can communicate. Thanks to Tom and S6T for the cool program. Roger, SM3GSJ has another program. It's over at qsl.net slash SM3GSJ called GCM Win. This program creates great circle maps. Lastly, field day is around the corner. Enjoy yourself and make lots of satellite contacts. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO. For the AWRL Audio News. Three radio amateurs on board the International Space Station are departing from the orbiting outpost. Expedition 47 Commander Tim Copra, KE5UDN, Flight Engineer Tim Peak, KG5BVI, and Yuri Malinchenko, RK3DUP, will undock from the space station early on Saturday morning, June 18th. They will be returning to Earth in a Soyuz spacecraft, commanded by Malinchenko after having spent 186 days in space since their December launch. During their stay, Copra and Peak scored some milestones for amateur radio on the International Space Station, otherwise known as ARIS. On March 10th, Copra conducted the 1,000th ARIS school contact with students in North Dakota. The first contact occurred in December of 2000. Peak made use of amateur radio in his Principia mission outreach, which aimed to engage students with communication technologies, inspiring them to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. During his stay in space, Peak hosted 10 ARIS school group contacts, including the first to take advantage of the Ham TV digital amateur radio television system when he spoke to students in England on February 11th.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. <lacht>